right, the most important thing is how to cover the middle, to my mind. It's the most vulnerable spot in doubles, whether you're two up, two back, and definitely if you're one up, one back. That might be another video at some point. Um, by the way, quick plug, if you need the one-stop shop location, go to Tennis House. Sign up to Tennis House on both Instagram and YouTube. You don't have to go anywhere else but my channel. All right, so let's assume we've both come up to net and the ball comes from the deuce court. How do we cover the middle? What I don't want is that we're both just staring at each other and we blame each other if the ball goes through the middle. So here's a system that I call plug and slide to cover the middle. Will you not ever get covered, uh, pass through the middle? Maybe not, but you're taking about 99, 98% away from your opponent. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to move with my opposite baseline player. At the same time, Davor comes over to the middle, and you'll notice how he's moving. Davor, how did you move up? So for sure, the most important thing is that you cut the angle and you go diagonal forward. Too many times in doubles, the players, if they move, they go sideways, and that's the biggest mistake you can do. So you have to see you follow that ball in, you go diagonal forward and split right before your opponent contacts the ball. Make sure that you have your racket right in front of you so you're ready to go. And that's, for me, the two most, most important, important things. Yeah. So in this case, if the ball comes from the deuce court, his role is called the plug. He's plugging the middle. And I'm sliding with my opposite baseline player. Now imagine if there is a cross-court direction off the ball that splits the two of us in half. Many of us have heard or have been taught that middle is being taken by the forehand. I see a couple of issues with that. So let's say the ball again comes from the deuce court. It is traveling towards the war. That ball would cut us in two and it passes this midline. Even when it's all the way back, I'm taking this ball. I have to move a lot more than Davor. Davor can just stick his racket out, and even if it's his backhand, I trust my player. The other thing is, I always teach to advance, right? So even if two, five, three O's have more issues with the backhand volley, I want them to move properly so when they're four O, four five, they don't have to relearn stuff. So again, I'm taking this ball here, this would be wrong. If I'm taking it because I'm moving, I might be unstable here, off balance. The other big issue is, if I'm taking this ball and I now volley behind me, my line is wide open. And the last thing is, what if Davor is a lefty? Right, and we both have our forehands, then nothing's gonna work anymore with the forehand. So I trust my partner that any cross-court direction ball is Davor's job. He is the plug. I'm the slider, and it would go the same exact way if the ball now goes to the ad side. Davor slides, and I plug the middle. So now Davor was a really, really good doubles player. He played second Bundesliga in Germany, which is, it's up there. So he knows what he's doing. I want to say I kind of knew what I was doing when I played. So what is the most dreaded law? Oh, I gave it away. The most dreaded shot, of course, for any doubles, it's the lob. You see us closing, but the thing is, when Davor hits a volley, just go ahead, he's going to stick his volleys. He's not going to pop any volleys up because he's a 5-0. I want to say 5-5. What happens if we're 2-5, 3-0, and we cannot stick the volley? What happens? We're getting lobbed. So to my mind, what we're doing with the plug and slide, we're just going to do it a little further back. Right? to force them, our opponents, to hit this area here, which is way tougher for most 3-0, 3-5, 4-0 even, to get that ball down to our feet. Okay, so we're going to the ad side. I'm plugging. There. All of a sudden, there's not as much room, and you do see that I'm staggered a little bit behind Davor, because now if the lob's coming, if he were to take it, he would have to turn 180 degrees. I'm here, I'm yelling mine, and I have a diagonal, and he switches. And the switch, you know, ideally you 
go over here to stay at the net if you don't feel comfortable. Do you teach it as well to run back? I'm then, going or? back. Yeah. Okay. Because a lot of times, if somebody is well trained, our opposite team comes in. And if I'm taking this ball, this lob here, and I hit a bad ball, Same. whoopsies, Devor is the target. And I do like Devor, so I'm not going to make him the target, of course. <laughs> Great point. I like that. Very good. Excellent. So let's show that movement maybe one or more um, times. Yeah. Just with feeding, yeah. ball comes to the deuce. I'm plugging. Ball comes to the add. Here. So one thing that I'm seeing a lot in um, my lessons is that people are getting really, really anxious to cover that line. So I'm seeing this here. To my mind, that's way too far over because you're covering out balls. To my mind, it depends a little bit on how tall you are, on how fast you are, and in this position, if I'm a right-hander or a left-hander. So if I'm a little bit of a shorter player, and let's say I'm a lefty, I need to maybe move out to about here. If I'm a little faster, this is probably the furthest I'm going to move out, because one, two, I have all these balls. If my opponent passes me, Ooh, that actually was on the line. If they pass me on the line, okay, I'll give it to them. Because for me, it's all about taunting them to hit the lower percentage shots. And that is the same principle that Davor is going to talk about just now. So in this scenario now, Mike is going to be back there. I'm going to push her a little bit out. And what is very important is that you remember that the, the very majority of the balls and doubles, they will go through the middle. So you try to make sure that you're aggressive and you cover the middle. And you, you can leave the alleys a little bit more open. It takes a little bit of time, as Mike has said. As better you get, as more you will understand it. You know? And it might not work perfectly at the beginning, but our goal is always to develop the players so they become the best they can. And hopefully four or four or five players at some point. So yeah. when I push Mike out there, I close in here. And I'm right here, and I don't miss that ball in a real point like that. So, and again, I push her out, close in. With one step, I have that. So this was that step I did. Maybe a 3-0 can't do that perfectly, but you're going to learn. You go in, you split, and as you see, like Mike said, if you're tall, if you have a big reach, she contacts there. With one step out and one other step, you can cover everything you have. So you do not need to stand in the alleys on either side. Yeah. So let's do that one more time, Micah. And I do have to admit that ball actually was a really, really good one. It's probably not what's going to happen all the time. <laughs> yeah. Ho ho hopefully not. So, Micah, get in there. I split. <laughs> and and I, I played right to him. Another yeah. good thing is when you get that backhand volley and you cover, what I like to teach, and I, uh, I ask Micah if she agrees with that, go to the net person. Don't hit back to the baseline player because you might get lopped and the reaction time for the net player right there, they Nothing. don't have any time. And ideally, aim to hit to the feet because when the racket is up, you can still have technically a chance to get it. So when it's below there, you're going to have a hard time hitting that one back. There we go.